How's it going, folks? I'm Brother Matthew, and welcome to Christian Coffee Time, where we sit down together to study the Word of God. And in this video, what I would like to just talk about just briefly is a teaching, a belief that a lot of people have, that we see it quite prevalent around. It's called the Divine Council. Now, some people have literally no idea what that means, and then there are others who study it quite adamantly and believe that it's a biblical doctrine and teaching, but what I would like to do in this broadcast is just talk about very quickly just where it came from, what it's addressing, and what does the Bible say. All right, so the Divine Council teaching, doctrine, ideology, whatever, whatever you want to call it, it's not biblical. It's not biblical at all. Some some people might right there just turn off the video and not want to listen, but I would challenge you just keep listening. And I'm going to show you some things that uh, you find quite surprising. The Divine Council teaching is that there are, is a plethora of rulers and judges and powers along with God that are over us to judge us and rule us and, and help control things and whatnot. This belief actually is very ancient and comes from pagan religions and, and became more prevalent with Rome and then with the Roman Catholic Church because they say that angels and dead saints and Mary are rulers and authorities and, and all that over us and that they advocate for us, they're our intercessors, we pray to them and they teach us and instruct us and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's not biblical at all, remotely. So it was inspired by pagan nations uh, it's a teaching of a multiplicity of gods and goddesses that work together under the Lord, under the Lord to rule us, be authority over us. Scripture states that God alone rules and counsels the heavenly. Uh, Isaiah 9, 6, he's called the, might, the, the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. And that he is the counsel altogether. He rules us. He judges. No one else judges. And that the heavenly just carries out his commands. The people that believe in the divine counsel theory are confusing the meaning of Elohim. And I'd like to talk about that one just for a moment. Elohim. Now, the word Elohim means in and of itself the elevated one. The one in a position of authority. Like king, prince, magistrate, ruler, governor... What not? That's what Elohim means. One in a position of authority to rule over others. Now we see in the Bible, we see two different forms of this. Capital G God, lowercase g God. Now this is where some people start to go stark raving mad when they see in the Bible of Psalm 82, it says, it says are, you, are you not all gods and children of the Most High? Uh, people in the New Age and other religions, like Hinduism or whatever, uh, they just go nuts with that and think that we're actually divine little mystical gods that can speak things into existence, kind of like how Kenneth Copeland says. And those kinds of people. But that's massively wrong. Now, there's a reason why the word God is capital G and lowercase g. We see both aspects in the Bible. Now, the, both capital G and lowercase g God mean Elohim. Hold on. Calm down. Try some decaf. If you think that it means that you're a divine mystical God. Now, the reason why it says capital G God when referring to the Lord is because that means God above all gods, the authority above all authorities, the ruler above all rulers. The word Elohim in and of itself has zero divine mystical connotation. There's zero divine mystical qualities to the word Elohim. It's just one of the names, one of the words, one of the terms that's used in the Bible to denote one in a position of authority. Now, when it says that we are gods, small g, that does not mean that we have divine mystical powers. That means that we are representatives of, ambassadors of, as we go in the power of the Lord. It's the Lord's power, the Lord's ability, the Lord's word, the Lord's authority. An ambassador to another nation is not the king, emperor, ruler. He's the representative of the ruler, the power behind him. That's what that's talking about. Now, as it talks about where Satan is the small g, God of this world, he's the authority, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, and that he 
rules as an authority in the world to draw people to his teaching and instruction in that that's what that's talking about one in a position of rule and authority so the people who believe in divine counsel theory don't actually study the words they don't actually study the meaning of the word elohim they're confusing the meaning of elohim the big issue here is the complete ignorance of the greek and hebrew Yes, Psalm 82, 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of your children of the Most High. Read the context and look what the rest of the Bible says. Who tried to teach a perverted form of that? Lucifer. Ye can be as God. Capital G. So the problem is, is people like Joel Osteen, Joyce Myers, and Benny Hinn and all of them, they, they teach that perverted form that the lowercase g is one and the same type of meaning as uppercase g. No. Plus also the divine counsel thing is that, that because you're called gods, that means you have the same type of ruling and authority like God has. No, that's wrong too. The meaning of this is simpler if we just look at the Hebrew meaning of the words. The word God, lowercase g, means Elohim, just like uppercase. Now, that word, lowercase g, God, has literally no mystical or divine aspects to it at all. It's a word des designed to authority, like king, prince, magistrate, governor, or ruler over others, as an elevated one. The angels... The, the angels are because they are sinless and holy and are a higher created being, but they are not over us as an authority. That's one thing we need to understand. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3 says, We will judge the angels. And if we take a look at Hebrews 1.14, and paired with Psalm 104, verse 4, we see the angels are the ministering spirits that sent forth to minister to them who should be heirs of salvation, that they comfort and help in carrying the messages and Daniel chapter 10 God gives a, gives them a, a message and they bring it to you that they serve in that way they are not our rulers or judges they are not our rulers and judges and the dead saints are not our rulers and judges nor are they advocates or mediators over us either and neither is Mary there is none other over us only the Lord God is the only ruler and authority and counsel over us People who hold to the divine counsel belief never actually study this aspect and just take the common thought of the word itself and they imply mystical divine attributes of judging and ruling over others in some divine counsel and they don't even look at the meaning of the words. Saying divine counsel implies that they are in authority over us and assist in ruling us and such as per the imparted meaning of the origin of divine counsel theory. The closest the Bible ever kind of somewhat close comes to type of counsel was just when in the book of job when the sons of god presented themselves to the lord the angels are gathered together and they received instruction and gave reports psalm 82 verse 1 god standeth in the congregation of the mighty to judge among the gods he judgeth among the gods the those in authority in service of the lord those given authority God alone is the whole council. The angels are the servants and are not part of the council. As 1 John 2, 1 and 1 Timothy 2, 5 states that Christ alone is the advocate mediator. And we ask of God alone and he teaches alone. The angels do not teach us or instruct us. The divine, <coughs> excuse me, the divine council theory, <coughs> excuse me, is Roman Catholic. That's where it came from. <coughs> In the Christian circles, we see we see this kind of teaching as well as some other sometimes that creep in that actually stems off of Roman Catholicism. We also see this teaching in Seventh-day Adventism. Seventh-day Adventists also teach a form of divine counsel. Ellen White, Ellen G. White, the founder of the Seventh-day Adventist cult, uh, she also was a bit of a necromancer because she believed that Hebrews 1.14 and, and Psalm 104.4 is talking about the dead saints, that the dead saints are the spirits that now minister to them who should be heirs of salvation, that you could speak to the spirits of dead saints and that the dead saints uh, also work with God in judging you and with the angels and everything because of the investigative judgment doctrine of Ellen G. White, that you don't even know if you're saved even if you believe in Jesus and keep all their, their crazy legalistic laws, that you still don't even know if you're saved because you stand before God on Judgment Day and he opens up the books and all, and all the other authorities then investigate your life to see if you're worthy enough to enter heaven. 
Uh, that's crazy. It's not what the Bible says. But And Roman Catholicism teaches that this divine council of angels and saints and Mary and everyone else works with God in guiding and judging and ruling over you. No, that's not what the Bible says. God alone is the whole council. The angels are the servants and are not part of the council. The divine council theory is Roman Catholic based within the so-called Christian realm. Roman Catholicism is not Christian. And it's where they get their ideas that you can call on angels and dead saints, which is also the inspiration of yesterday's belief. So we see and use the word of God in the way that we have been trained to by Western and Eastern culture as actual gods of power and supernatural ability. You know what I mean by that? is in the world and in Western culture, we, we read the word God and we immediately get this assumption that it's referring to divine gods. No, no, no. That's why it's so important to do word studies. It's so important to look at the original Greek and Hebrew in this way to see what the meaning is, if you have any thoughts on that. Because as the Lord says in Isaiah 45, I, I, that I am God and I am alone in the Lord and there's none other beside me. So if we take all the word of God, how can you even remotely justify divine counsel belief doctrine without contradicting any single other part of scripture? Any opinion, teaching, doctrine, ideology that contradicts the word of God even remotely is wrong. Any opinion, doctrine, teaching, ideology, experience, vision, whatever have you, catechism, commentary, whatever, that contradicts the word of God even remotely is wrong. Because God can't lie, and God is not the author of confusion, and God can't make mistakes, and he will never contradict himself. God said, I'll preserve my word unto all generations. So the grass withers and the flowers fade, my word will stand forever. That my, my word is above my very name. Not one jot or one tittle shall always pass from the law. Jot and tittle is the Hebrew and the Greek. The, and so therefore, there are no lost books of the Bible. The word of God is not corrupted in this way, so we know what it says because we still have it without flaw. And what it says is what it means, whether you like it or not, as First Peter, Second Peter, chapter one, verses twenty to twenty-one, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. Second Timothy three sixteen to seventeen, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, from Genesis to Revelation. It's all given by God, without error. So, any opinion, teaching, or doctrine, or ideology that contradicts this is not of God. So. We need to be very careful about implying personal thought to this, like the hyper charismatic circles that teach that you're a God doctrine and little you're a little mini God because God begets God kind and you can speak things into existence like God can. That's just stupid. That's heresy. Satan said that. That's Luciferian. The issue with, with a lot of this, as you see creeping into a lot of Christian circles, is the the issue with non-denominationalism in the sense that they don't want to adhere to any one denomination so they'll be befriend many and they'll start to take on some doctrines of others because they believe they know what they're talking about because well they're a pastor they have degrees or diplomas they wrote commentaries so they must know what they're talking about or that they've held to that belief for a long time so it must be true and without actually studying it now it's not always the case but it is the case in a lot of circumstances we got to be careful about just accepting things because someone held it for a long time taught teaches it or they wrote it or they have degrees they must know what does the bible say Acts 17 11 be like the bereans do the work study it out don't contradict the word of god god's word does not justify or validate the divine council theory that is a seventh day adventist roman catholic heresy it's not christian it's not biblical it's a heresy. The divine counsel teaching is heresy. It's not biblical. So there you go. Just wanted to go over that. So take that as you will. But do the work. Do the study. Look it up. What does the Bible say? And let me know. Please leave a comment, and I'd love to love to hear from you. Give it a like if uh, if you support this, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell icon so you know when I put up a new video. And God bless you, folks. God bless all those who love our Lord God Jesus Christ. God bless all those who love His Holy Word. Hope to see you again, folks. And as always, if I don't see you again, I'll see you in the sky. God bless.